This is Nate Riggs with NateRiggs.com, and I'm here with Jennifer McDonald, who is with Engage One to One. Thanks for taking time with me today, Jennifer. No problem. Thanks for asking me to join. So tell me a little bit about kind of how you joined Engage One to One and what you're doing for the company. Um, they were looking for somebody who's been in social media in the franchising industry, and for the last three years, I was a social media manager, community manager at Win Home Inspection, and that is a franchising development company, and we had about 180 locations, so I've been dealing with social media for my franchisees for three years, so I knew the struggles and um, the challenges, and most of our clients are franchisors, so they really wanted to bring somebody on that could do community management for us, but also understood what franchisors are dealing with because they're our clients, so I can help them with their social media strategies and also helping them get their franchisees on board with social media. Okay, so obviously dealing with business owners that or, or companies that have multiple locations, um, that can create a unique challenge, particularly around Facebook. Um, yeah. One of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you today was in regards to the Facebook timeline for pages release that's, mm -hmm. that's come out as of this week. So it seems like uh, to build some more value or additional value around the IPO, Facebook has, has rolled out the timeline for pages. Um, what's, your, what's your initial impressions of how this affects community management on Facebook pages? Um, my initial thought, first thought, is that it's awesome. I blogged about it actually six months ago when they first rolled out Facebook timeline for personal pages and I was like, I really hope this is going to come for brand pages because it'll let you tell a story about your brand. You'll see it from, you can have it from the day you started your company all the way till present day and so you can fill in data before you join Facebook or even in the beginning when you didn't have time to do that. So I think it's awesome because that way when somebody visits your page now, they actually are landing on the timeline and they can just scroll down the timeline and learn all about your company from you know, creation till now. So I think that's great. But when it comes to from a community management standpoint, I think it's going to be a little bit of a challenge because we don't have the landing tab anymore. Okay. And so we don't have like an immediate introduction, an immediate call to action, why they should like the page, you know, click like, click up here. Um, so I think that's a little bit of struggle, so it really puts a focus on that cover photo, and I think that's, you know, you really get a focus on the cover photo, make it an awesome image, you know, really high resolution, yeah. has to be visually appealing, um, you get, of course, a buy, to, buy Facebook terms of service, no contact info, no calls to action, but, um, which is a challenge for sure, but make it something about your brand. A great example is Starbucks, theirs is just coffee beans with like a little thing you know shovel in the coffee like that's it like it's very basic it's a good resolution photo but like it totally represents their brand okay. so um, you also have that little profile picture down there so what I've done with ours is we have ours it's a global map and then like a map of the globe with um, social media icons on it and then we have our little profile picture down below and then and in our about section just talks a little bit about what we do which is like a good introduction and then you do have those um, first four tabs, so I make sure that the first three tabs that you can show are actually um, the three most important that you want users to be able to get information with you about. So like one's our blog, the other one is about um, our 2.1 version release that we just did, so okay. I think that helps as well. So when, you, when you're approaching the timeline for Engage 1 to 1, what are you thinking about um, when you're selecting what posts to pin, uh, knowing that those can only live for seven days? And then how are you differentiating between posts that you would want to pin versus things that you would want to create as, as milestones? I know that milestones are, are, per Facebook's guidelines, supposed to be used for either significant company events or significant page events. But I think any community manager knows that there are the rules and then there are how you can bend the rules and kind of hack the system. So how are you approaching um, selecting your pins and then selecting company milestones or, or timeline milestones? Um, well, that's what Facebook says, but we haven't had it long enough to see how people are using it. But what we've done on our page um, is I've ha used to highlight um, what would be a big recent community, uh, sorry, company event for us is when we did our 2.1 release of our application. It was a huge change, and so it was really big for our clients. It was big for us as a, you know, as an application. So I really highlighted that. And then for a pin, I just pinned um, Facebook timeline when we did our blog. We also did a video, and actually show you on the screen the changes with timeline on our page. So um, I pin that to the top. So for us right now, that'd probably be the most significant pin until you know a really big blog post comes up. Okay. 
Um, one of the other features that has been built into the, the new timeline for pages is the ability for fans to directly message um, a brand. And there's some limitations around that. The brand can only uh, respond up to two times uh, when that fan directly messages them, and they also have to be messaged by a fan before they can use that feature. Have you seen any activity on that for Engage One to One or any of your other clients? And kind of what's your take about whether that's valuable or whether it's going to take some time to get adopted by users? Kind of what's your, your perspective on, on the ability to direct, to direct message brands? Yeah, I did actually the first day I had somebody message me. And so I was actually shocked. I thought it'd be a while because we don't have a huge community. We just started a marketing company, uh, marketing department a month ago. So um, I did actually have somebody and it was the same person who had reached out to me on Google+. Plus. So I know who the person was. It actually comes out it's not really a good connection. They're not so much of a spammer, but maybe just kind of some kind of solicitor. But um, it works well. You know, they got right back to me. I think it'll be convenient because when I was trying to, I was monitoring my franchisees before. And what I will be doing with our clients is I'll go through and maybe I'll see something that either is against terms of service or something they could do better or something I really like that I want to talk to them about. What's a pain right now is I have to actually go find who the manager is for that client, find out what their name is, see if I'm a friend with them on Facebook. If not, I have to email them, find their email address. But it'd be awesome to just click message and have it go right to the person that's doing that page right now. Okay. So I think it will be huge. Um, when it comes to how many times the page can write them back, I think two is more than enough because if it's a conversation, they're going to write you back. And if they don't, then it wasn't important enough to them or they're not worth your time, I guess. Um, so again, I think one of the points you iterated it is, is it's very early on in the release of Timeline. There's a lot of people going out and starting to experiment with it. Uh, I'm always surprised at the amount of pages that still haven't converted their page over to the new format. Um, that being said, everybody will be converted on the 30th of, of this month. If you were to give one piece of, of advice to uh, community managers on pages who haven't updated the timeline yet, what would it be? What, what's your recommendation for how they can kind of get started and approach? Uh, one big thing, it wouldn't really be a tip first, but just be really focused on that cover photo because as I said before, that is the main representation of your company on Facebook. So make sure you focus on the cover photo. Um, second for a tip or a trick would be to find some big brands and see how they're using Timeline and really, you know, just follow them for a bit to get some ideas. Um, secondly would be research, you know, read some blogs. Mashable would be a great one. Facebook marketing on Facebook, if you follow them as a business page, they put out great information. I mean, Facebook's Help Center has grown 400% since I first started Facebook for Business, which was almost five years ago. And back then, they didn't even have a help section. Or it might have, but it, like, had no information in it. So that's really helpful, and that's right from the source. So I'd, I definitely recommend following them on Facebook. Um, and then use Timeline to tell a story about your brand. I think that's really important. Remember what Timeline's for. It's just, for, for. it's just like your personal profile. It's to tell a story. So like use it that way for your business. Like tell your boss that you need to add personality. You need to take pictures around the office of your employees. You need to talk about these you know, events where you guys are having your softball team for your company and you guys are going out and like having a picnic. Like post photos, definitely. You know, share, add personality. But, you know, and you're definitely going to post company updates, of course, and highlight them. But you got to have a mix. You definitely got to make it personal. That's what timeline is. And nobody's going to follow and interact you if you don't do it that way. It's, it's very interesting that with the timeline release, it's, it really is forcing companies and brands to go back to content and become much more personal with the content that they they share versus uh, what I think was a dependence on, on applications as well. Uh, this is all really great advice and it's always good to talk to somebody who's kind of on the front lines of this. So thanks very much for, for taking time to join me uh, today. And uh, again, Jennifer McDonald from Engage One to One uh, on the Facebook timeline. Very much appreciate your insights. Thanks so much. Thanks for asking. Have a good day. You too. Thanks.